Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. To new subscribers, I would like to draw your attention to a few things just to help you get the best out of the channel. If you're new here, you're welcome. But there's quite a lot of material and you will want to be able to navigate that in the best way so that you can get the benefit that the Lord has brought you here for. There is a playlist. I have multiple playlists here on the Master's Voice. The most important playlist is the Russia and the China playlist. There's also the Sin series. There is a Repentance series. There are two Supernatural series. One is for aliens and the other one is for fallen angels and giants, things that are not necessarily taught in mainstream Christianity. And so you can find that by simply clicking on the channel icon, the little picture, or you can click on the channel name itself and it will take you to the dashboard. And on the dashboard, you will see home, you will see videos, you will see channels, playlists about and community. And when you click on playlists, all the videos are arranged helpfully by theme. I recommend that you watch them from the oldest one all the way up to the newest, taking your time to go through whatever theme that you want to pursue. And I guarantee you that by the time you come to the end of your chosen playlist, you would have received so much teaching and so much understanding from the Holy Spirit himself on that particular topic, as well as many other things that I am led to speak about as I am bringing forth the particular word of the Lord. There's also a community page. The community page is where I put when the prophecies that I've covered in the past two, three years out, 2019, 2020, 2021, something like that. When those prophecies are either shaping themselves or unfolding or particular aspects of them that were spoken of repetitively have now started to happen. Then as time allows, I put those things on the community page. The community page is also where I share a lot of good teaching and prophetic insights, written articles that I have been doing almost all my life and sharing with many other people. And now that I actually have a channel and I have the community page open to me, that's where I put a lot of thought provoking articles so that we can become better Christians built up in our spirit, man edified, and also taught true things as the Lord would want us to share in his word. The community page usually only shows up for sus subscribers. So um, you are welcome to subscribe. There is absolutely no pressure. If you subscribe, then the community page will begin to show up. You'll begin to see written posts on your YouTube from the Master's Voice Prophecy blog instead of only videos. Um, the main blog for this entire channel, the, the central hub at the core of all that you may find on social media and other channels and podcasts and things like that is the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. And the address for that is www.the-masters-voice.com. And that is where the bulk of the prophecies over the last few years have been written down. I've been writing down those prophecies since May, 2019, but the actual dates that I started receiving the prophecies from the Lord, started hearing from the Lord, started having dreams and visions from the Lord, direct communications from him concerning these things. In addition to my own personal walk with God was in the year 2012. And so today's prophecy has a very short title and I received it over two days. So it was Sunday, September the 3rd, 2023 into Monday, September the 4th, 2023. So the Lord was speaking, saying different things to me, and I'm going to give uh, the September 4th prophecy first and then the September 3rd prophecy and discuss them as the Holy Spirit leads. The title of this prophecy, September the 3rd to September the 4th, 2023 is SOS, talking about the day that Mystery Babylon actually enters into her Revelation 18 phase. There is so much conjecture and so much argument in the Christian world, especially here in the United States, about the identity of Mystery Babylon. Who is this mysterious city, so it is called? Who is this kingdom that is referenced as being totally obliterated, annihilated, and destroyed in Revelation 18? Who has angered God so much 
that he will release such a cacophony of punishments, basically like a final crescendo drum beat when the drummer is playing all the instruments at once and just making a huge sound. What nation or what kingdom, as it says, city, who's going to receive that? Here on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog, the Lord has made it very clear that Mystery Babylon is the United States of America. Mystery Babylon is not Iraq. It is not Iran. It is not any of those nations out there in the ancient basin of the Persians. It is not Rome, the Catholic Church, the Vatican, or even whatever else people may think. Mystery Babylon is America. Mystery Babylon is the once golden cup that was held in Jesus's hand. But now, as I said in a prophecy from long back, probably a few years ago, said the cup has become corrupted and its contents have been befouled, meaning that they have been polluted. And now the nations have drunk from that cup. And as Jeremiah discussed in Jeremiah 50 and 51, the nations have started to run mad off of the putrid cup that they received from Mystery Babylon. And so God is going to separate the corrupter from everyone else. And in this prophecy, God is saying how it will go down for America. And I have to tell you, it is exactly how America has made it go down for other nations when they have been in need. SOS, September the 4th, 2023. America will give a distress call in the day of her final attack. She will give an SOS, a public appeal to the nations of the world to intervene and stop Russia when the bear attacks her. Yet there will be no hand of help and no ally. I despise your allies, says the Lord. No one will come. No one will respond. No one will intervene. America will be left to herself on that day and her judgments will fall in one hour. So the best place to start is in the word of God. Many times I have made this phrase in the prophecies. I have spoken this phrase in the prophecies. Her judgments will fall in one hour. In other prophecies, it goes like this. Her judgments will fall in a single day. So where do we find that phraseology used? If your argument is that it has to be another country, then where have you heard that Iraq is going to be judged in a single day? Where have you heard that the Catholic Church is going to have its judgments fall upon it in a single hour? Where are you where have you heard the Lord prophesying through anyone that the Catholic Church is going to send out a distress signal and no one will come to her and leave her alone. Rome, the Vatican, the Pope, all the priests that are out there, they're going to be utterly abandoned by the entire world. They're going to be desperately crying out for help because so many people believe that they are the city by the sea, the city sitting on seven hills, and they're going to send out a distress signal. Why would that church be sending out a distress signal? What will be happening to cause them to do that? Let us see what the word of God says. Revelation chapter 18, and I would first like to look at verse two. We see the angel of the Lord bringing out a very loud announcement. You have to understand when these angels are crying out in the book of Revelation, these uh, beings, these holy beings of God are very, very mighty and powerful. And the voices that God has given them, well, we heard Isaiah make reference to them in his book when he was talking about the year that King Uzziah died and he saw the Lord. He saw the Lord and the angels were flying around and it says they were crying out, holy, 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 as they beheld the Lord. And it says that the doorposts of the Lord's house were shaken by the voice of those angels as they flew around. And so this angel here in verse two is crying out similarly with a loud voice and his cry is echoing everywhere as he makes this pronouncement against Babylon. And he cried mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and has become a dwelling place of demons a prison for every foul spirit 
and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. So the announcement has been made. Finally, this brazen nation, the one that is discussed in Revelation 17 called Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the of the abominations of the earth. This one has finally fallen. Great though she was, she has come to the end. And it says here in verse three that all the nations, for all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. Another clue, who's trading with the Catholic church? Where are the merchants of the earth trading with Rome? And which merchants of the earth besides BlackRock are trading with Iraq? And nobody has been trading with Iran due to American sanctions for over two decades. So another sign of the prophecies here is verse four. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues. So where have we been hearing it prophesied into the earth now in the last days that people should come out of Iraq? Where have we been hearing it prophesied that all the nations of the earth should come out of Rome before they share in the Vatican's sins? And yet it has been prophesied here back to back to back that God says that he will scatter all the peoples of the earth, the entire melting pot, of humanity that lives here in the United States. And he said, if you thought you came to settle here, you thought you had found a forever home, he called it. You thought that you would grow old, old here. I, the Lord, am going to put an end to all that and I will discourage you from staying here and I will scatter you back to your nations. But we are looking for that elusive clue of judgments falling in a single hour. And that can be found here. Just a moment, please. In Revelation chapter 18 and verse 10. Well, actually, let me read verse 9. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon that mighty city for in one hour, your judgment has come. And so here's the word of the Lord penned by John, the revelator, thousands and thousands of years ago, Revelation 18 verses nine and 10, saying that the kings of the earth, this is presidents, this is heads of nations, this is perhaps as it will be in the future time, heads of federations, 10 federations around the world that will give their power to the beast who committed fornication with this nation and who lived and partook in her luxury will find themselves suddenly shocked as they see what comes upon her. The kind of shock that will drive them to weep. This is just personal private crying, but also lament. This is open, loud, wailing, sorrowing, throwing dust upon the head. They will do all this for her. And why? It says that they will see the smoke of her burning. Now, in the very old prophecies, if you have been here for a while, you will remember that the Lord says that when America is nuked and bombed by the Russians and the Chinese, that this country will go through so much shock and awe in a single day, the kind of attack that will come upon her upon the East Coast and the West Coast at the same time. America will be hit on both sides, a simultaneous attack, a surprise attack. In another prophecy that is called Contamination, Russia, and War, I think that is the name of the prophecy. But one thing the Lord said is that America will be struck a surprise blow, that Russia will give America a sucker punch. So a sucker punch is when someone hits you and you're not expecting it. You are not expecting to be hit by anyone. You are perhaps equally matched with an opponent. No one is stronger than the other. And the two of you are perhaps having an altercation, a war of words, sending forth threats. And then one of you decides we're evenly matched. If we fight and we both know we're going to fight at the same time, 
who knows what the outcome might be. We will both, both get torn. We will both get bloody. And so there will be a sucker punch, a punch, a preemptive strike actually is what the proper term for that is a blow when you are not expecting it. And that is what Russia is going to do. Russia is going to come here from what I have seen in these prophecies and shared in the colder months of a year that I do not have. I don't give dates here. I simply bring forth the word of the Lord as I've seen in my dreams, as I've seen in my visions. And I saw that Russia will choose a time that favors her for the Lord says that the, the cold favors the bear. Russia is a country of extreme and intense winters. America has winters and we have areas of extreme winter, intense winter. But the problem here is that people don't revel in the snow. Nobody likes it. Everyone is bundled up inside. The thermostat is on. The house is heated. People are drinking warm drinks. God says, America, in the cold, you bundle up. But in the cold, Russia thrives. And so let that be born in mind. And so we are looking here in the word of God written long before my time that kings of the earth are going to look upon the destruction of Babylon and they will stand at a distance afraid of her torment. So they're going to stand far off because they will be terrified by what they see happening to her and the military machine of the Russians and the Chinese things that people mock now because they really believe that what Russia is showing in Ukraine is what Russia is really like. And the Lord did call what is happening in Ukraine a toy war, a dummy war, a test drive for Russia. And I came and I said months ago, I think it is probably during this year, but I do not have the name of the prophecy to hand. I said months ago that the Lord says that what Vladimir Putin is doing in the Ukraine is that he is testing the international waters to see what is the response to conquering. Conquering is no longer allowed in the international arena. That was the old era of world building, the old era when almost all nations had kings, emperors, rulers, absolute rulers, a single guy who didn't need a parliament and he didn't need Congress. He didn't need senators. He ruled alone and his word was decree. In those days, the kings made a decree. It was the time for war. And then you went and you could conquer, you could seize territory. That is how Australia was taken over. That is how Africa was taken over. That is how many places were captured. But now we are in the era of polite society and that is not allowed. We have international protocols. We have international treaties and rules. We have the United Nations. And so you don't march into territory now and annex it. You don't do that. It is considered extremely aggressive. It's an act of aggression. Sometimes it's even seen as an act of war. And so you don't do such things. But the Lord says that now, under the auspices of war, Vladimir Putin is testing the temperature of the international community. That is what the Lord says he's doing. He's watching to see when soldiers cross the border on whatever pretext a ruler may say, we're crossing to set our people free. We're crossing because we held a memorandum and our people want to come back and be absorbed into Russia. Whatever the premise is, the Lord says that actually that man went into Ukraine to see what the international community would do. And the answer is an overwhelming nothing. Threats were made, remonstrations were made, fingers were shook. But at the end of the day, nothing happened to Russia. Russia is continuing. Her president is flying all over the place, the guest of honor here, there, and the other place. He's happily building a contrary currency to the US dollar, and nothing has happened for everything that he has done for crossing that border. And this is a test war, God has said because you have heard it prophesied here in the master's voice that exactly what's happening in Ukraine, it will happen to France. It will happen to all those countries there in the EU. Russia will absorb back all the, the former USSR states and go back to her normal size and then become even bigger because she's going to gobble even more territory than is, than is currently seen. 
So mystery Babylon, here you can hear in verse 10, in one hour, a judgment will come. And here is the prophetic word from the Lord that America will be left to herself on that fateful day and her judgments will fall in one hour. So I hope that you can see that there is more than enough comparison between what the father is saying now in 2023 and what was said thousands of years ago. America is going to give a distress call in the day of her final attack. That final attack will be the day that we will wake up to the sound of Russia in the air, the sound of Russia and China coming out of the sea. As I described, the best of the best of the best is who God said that those sea people, air people will be. But for sure, the people coming out of the chilly waters of the sea will be the best of the best of the best. And they were just coming out in wetsuits out of freezing water and women were among them. And the Lord said that no man hearing that women will be coming out of the sea could, should think, oh, well, okay, then they're going to be a little bit compromised because they've got females. That's not the case at all. These women are merciless and they will slaughter and kill on sight because he insisted that they are the best of the best of the best. So these are not, these are not soldiers trained with wish I had the scripture to hand. These are not soldiers trained with a soft heart. If you read the prophecies that I have brought here concerning passages from Jeremiah, this army is described as an army that marches in formation. It says that not a single one of them is out of formation. Not a single one has a sandal strap untied. Why is the Bible so particular? If men are marching in rank and somebody's sandal strap is untied, you are more than likely to trip over it. And if a soldier trips, he will cause the men in front to stumble as he, he fumbles against them to keep his balance. And God is basically saying, if a sandal strap could cause this army to fall out of formation, then they will make sure that no soldier has a shoe untied. They are not going to break rank. And it says also that they cannot be bribed and that they will not spare. Their eye will not spare. This means that they will not have mercy even on babies. They will not have mercy even on the unborn. And that is That is how the Lord introduced Russia in America to me a dream without context, without warning, in which I saw soldiers with the lightning bolt bayonet at the end of the gun, swarming the streets of the United States. In a suburb I was standing and I just saw soldiers spreading out through the streets and people came out and were panicking and the soldiers were just cutting them down, killing them. And I saw them open up the belly of a woman that was pregnant with that sharp knife on the end of a gun. And so the Lord says that America will definitely call out for help on the day that this devastating co um, concentrated attack, this devastating concentrated attack is going to come against the United States. And so the Lord is saying that America will give a distress call just think of a siren, just think of the tsunami sirens in the day that this final attack comes. So when you say final attack, then definitely there's going to be something leading up to it. So you can expect, this is from March, 2022, the changing world order. That is the name of that prophecy. And in that prophecy, the Lord said he was talking about different things that would happen. This is all from March, 2022, different small prophecies. So I put them into one. And one of the things that I remember from that is the Lord said that President Xi, Xi Jinping will definitely say all that he has to say against America. So we can expect that president to become more vocal, to share what he thinks and what he feels about the United States. But a final attack means the day of the preemptive strike, the day of the sucker punch, the day when America will still think we're still having our usual conversations. We're still having our usual war of words. And then suddenly out of nowhere, a strike unexpected, unprovoked, and so devastating that the Lord says that the United States will not be able to answer back at all. She will give an SOS. That's a distress call. 
a public appeal to the nations of the world to intervene and to stop Russia when the bear attacks her. Yet there will be no hand of help and no ally. Is it possible to speak of this matter without looking at a recent occurrence in the United Nations, the current war that is taking place now in the Middle East? And it is agreed by everyone, surely there is devastation and there is loss of life and tempers are high and flaring. But we have to introduce humanitarian aid into the situation. We have to give food. We have to give medical aid. We have to see, we have to be allowed to assess what the casualties are. We need to take a holistic look at this situation. Let there be a ceasefire in accordance with well-established international law. And as is custom, all the nations get together and put it to a vote. And everybody agrees. It may not have been unanimous, but enough people agreed that this is a human approach. And one hand is defiant. One hand says, no, we have no need for a ceasefire. We have other objectives. We vote no. Here is the exact word from God given in September, long before what is on your television now became a reality. September comes before October the 7th. And God says, no hand will help. Nobody will pay attention to this public appeal when Russia attacks America. America is going to give a loud cry for humanitarian aid. America is going to give a loud cry for NATO to armor up, weapon up, bullet up, fighter jet up and come over here and do something about it. And the father says, not a single nation will intervene. Nobody will stop Russia when America is attacked. No one will come. No one will respond. No one will intervene. And America will be left to herself on that day. So no helping hand, no ally. Americans truly believe that all the military bases that are scattered all around the world mean something, but that's because the majority of us in this country have never come here to listen to the prophecy that I gave about six months ago, where I said that I saw very clearly that America began to pull back her arms because she was going broke. She couldn't afford the consulates anymore. She couldn't afford the embassies anymore. She couldn't afford the military bases anymore. The soldiers had to come home, not because we were capitulating, but because we were broke. They weren't getting fed. The bases won't be able to be maintained. And now in this present day, we can also see that the bases are not safe. When they bomb you and strike you 14 times at your own air base, I think it's safe to say that it's time to come back to the drawing board and begin to reconsider your options. This is if you are wise. The United States is not wise. If the United States were wise, I would have given three prophecies and the end of my ministry would have come. But here I am. I have passed 420 something prophecies and the Lord is still giving more of them. And we are going now on five years. It will be five years next May, 2019. And so these prophecies, the Lord gives very short sentences. But once you link them to the scripture, they begin to balloon. They begin to open up and you begin to see that a picture is being painted here by God. Let me read out the scripture that paints the picture of everything that I just said. In the measure, verse six, render to her just as she rendered to you and repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. This is double Yemen, double Syria, double Iraq, double Cuban missile crisis, double Iranian trade bans, double Zimbabwean sanctions, double Afghanistan, double war on terror, double everything. Render to her, give her back what she gave the world. 
The economy she destroyed, destroy her economy. The president that she crept up on and killed in the middle of the night, and then suddenly you wake up and a nation is in a coup and Washington is behind it, do the same to her, destabilize her government. So this is not only the final attack. The final attack is just the end, end bit. But the judgment against Mystery Babylon is give her back exactly what she gave. So now we look historically and you think of all the things that she gave. And you have to ask yourself, back in the old days, dropping that atom bomb on Japan was certainly an unseen thing. It had never happened before and it's never been done again. And yet the Lord said that in the day of America's punishment, she will be burning so much from nuclear releases that the smoke of it will be able to be seen from Google maps. I used to repeat that part of prophecy quite a lot, but then it comes to a point where you're moving on into new messages. And so that part was left able to see the burning of the United States from Google maps. And then what does the Bible say here? Why are the Kings and the merchants crying? They're weeping and lamenting for her when they see the smoke of her burning. How on earth will people in the Netherlands, how on earth will people in India see the burning of America? Surely we're not going to be able to see that just in the sky. We will be able to see the smoke of her burning on all the media and technological devices that we have today. The smoke of the burning will be on every TV. Drones will be picking it up. Satellites will be picking it up. Kids with cell phones now will be picking it up. John the Revelator could not have known that, but he was faithful to write down what he saw, and now we know how it will happen. So give her back just as she gave you, and give her back double. So this is twice as much the evil, twice as much the wars, twice as much the enslavement, twice as much everything in the measure that she glorified herself and she lived luxuriously in the same measure, give her torment and sorrow because she says in her heart, I sit as a queen and I am no widow and I will not see sorrow. The Bible has very precise language, but the thing is that as people listen to the word of God and they listen to the prophecies, their hearts become so stressed out that they miss what God is saying. You become so caught up in the, in the, in the moment, you become so caught up in the immediacy of your humanity that I don't like this. I'm upset. This is scary that you actually shift a very crucial, you lose something very crucial, which is listening to what God is saying. Why does God feel this way? This is clearly harsh punishment, but what is God doing it for? To get the answer for that, all you have to do is go and look at the America series and the Sin series. There's absolutely no way that you can come out of that those two series of videos. I think one has 13 videos and the other one has about 20 something videos. You cannot watch those two series and come back and say, you know, Celestial, I'm still a little confused about why he's just so mad. It's impossible. So. Why is God's language precise? And why is it imperative for us to catch God's heart in this? Because it is God's time now. I've always said it. It is not Joel Osteen's time. It is not T.D. Jake's time. It's not the time of the superstar. It is God's time. All humanity and everything to do with us is descending. Even the rise of the beast system, please understand it, will be the lowest point of humanity. Because when you see the depravity that will go on in the beast system. When you see the seven year old with her 57 year old husband, or when you see the 60 year old lady with her 12 year old husband, or her 12 year old toy boy paid for by the hour gigolo. When you see these things, when they legalize pedophilia and when they legalize bestiality, as I have already covered during the so-called pride months, of this year. When you see these things, you will understand that even if the technology is at peak and they're healing every form of cancer and sickness known to man, because they will introduce fallen angel technology. Even if that happens, we will be at our most depraved. We will be at our very worst selves. 
chasing potions for eternal life, corrupting this vessel, canceling ourselves out of ever being able to enter into the immaculate and eternal kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. People will be at their lowest point, like animals, but walking around filled with paid for blood potion and looking 16 years old when they're actually 97, a corruption, a totally depraved version of humanity. Satan's imagining of what the world would look like if he were creator, if he were God, we are coming down and God is rising. His tone is higher and his people will be rising with him to their strongest point. And part of that is strengthening yourself against the spirit of fear and the spirit of doubt and the spirit of mockery and the spirit of paralysis, the spirit of stagnancy and of unbelief, which completely casts you out of being able to grasp the truth that the Lord brings forth to us here on this channel. So why is God saying by the same measure that she glorified herself to glorify yourself is basically to walk in pride. Who's willing to accept and admit that this is a nation of pride? Many people who are here now, you struggled with that when you first came. You could not accept that this good nation, a nation of good people, could be judged by God like this. Are we really so bad? What have we done? And then as you stayed and the Holy Spirit began to roll back the blanket and show you the faces under the ground, the traffic children, the carcasses of the babies that are aborted and then don't even get a burial. Why would we bury all that good money into trade and industry they go? They are eaten by people. The dead children of this country are a delicacy that are consumed by human beings in this country. There is a taste for child flesh, dead or alive. Their parts are sold off. They are made into medicine. They're good business. A baby with no life in it is good business in the United States. And the laws prove that the morality of the nation support that business directly and indirectly, tacitly and overtly by making laws that reinforce the status quo. So as we are forced to open our eyes through prophecy, because that is the work of prophecy, to shout and sound out and trumpet out truth so loud that you don't get to say, I can't see it. Your eyes will be pried open and then propped open with toothpicks and you'll be forced to look at it. And God says, as the righteous, we will see all the things that he is talking about until our hearts will be failing. And then we will know how he has felt watching this nation devolve into what it has become. So to glorify yourself is to have a prideful spirit, very elevated, very lifted up. I sit as a queen. I'm the best. We're the greatest country in the world. We will build back better. MAGA, you can't stop us. We've got the key to the city. To glorify yourself is to say that you are above all others. To glorify yourself is to have a president who can open his mouth on international TV and call other countries toilets. Refer to other nations. People have their flags. They have their national food. They have their national teams. They, they're proud nations. And then you look at them and you call them toilet countries just for me to keep the conversation civil here because we all know who said it and how he said it without a flinch or a thought. To glorify yourself is to carry war to other borders and then to come back and give the people in your country a status update and tell them, we won, we've won, we've settled everything. Yes, what's that? Yes, people did die, but that's collateral damage and it was worth it quote, unquote, Secretary of State, President Madeleine Albright. To glorify yourself means to lift yourself up and to live luxuriously mean that you're lacking nothing. Things are hard now. And whenever things are hard in the nation, people begin to suffer amnesia. So because things are hard now and wallets are tight and everything is tight, people have forgotten the 
opulence of the United States. They have forgotten what kind of wealth historically this nation has already always moved in. Now God says, by the same measure of their pride and by the same measure of their wealth, and both those measures are pretty high unattainable metrics. Mexico can never say that she has had as much pride or as much wealth and opulence, favor, influence, and power as the United States. Nobody's going to roll up and try to measure to the U.S. military as it once was. But God says, by those very same high metrics, I want you to now bring her down and give her the exact level of sorrow and the exact level of torment. So however high the pride was, make the sorrow that high. And however high the money was, the wealth, make the torment. This is intense suffering. Torment is not just I slammed my finger in the car door and it hurts. Torment is basically being lit on fire with kerosene while you are still alive. Whatever that feeling may feel like. May God have mercy. So the father says, the pride and the wealth match her torment and her sorrows. Those sorrows have been discussed in endless prophecies. Losing all your wealth, becoming penniless. In the prophecy, the iron gods, I mentioned that there was a section there where I saw people sobbing in the bank as the money failed, as they got poorer and they were not able to complete paying for their homes. They could not maintain their mortgages anymore. And the, the bank gave them a grace period, but they just couldn't cut it. And, and property was signed back over to the bank. And families had to leave homes that they had either upscaled into, or they had to leave homes that they had been in for generations and move to apartments, move to trailer parks, move to the shelter, move to wherever they could afford. And that was heartbreaking. People couldn't make their lives work anymore. That's the sorrow to see civil war coming to your nation and knowing that you are not growing old in whatever state you were born. I'm a proud Texan, born and raised here, and then finishing your life in Turkey, finishing your life in wherever you can go, Mexico, Guadalajara. That's the sorrow. To be alive and watch what you love taken away, relinquishing it, as I shared in one of the prophecies recently, and all for saying, I'm a queen, I'm not a widow, meaning I'm not going to lose my babies because the rapture is coming. All that she's saying is not real because I'm not appointed to wrath. I will not see sorrow. I will not be a widow. And yet the prophecy has come here and it's called the mother of seven. And God is basically saying, even if a woman is married and has birthed seven sons in the wars to come, the husband and all seven of the sons will be taken away because America is going to do exactly what King Saul did. King Saul took all their sons into the army, exactly as prophet Samuel told them. He's going to conscript your boys and he's going to force them to serve in his army. Every Israelite at the age of 20 had to do military service. This is before you wanted to be a farmer, you wanted to be anything else. The only people free of that conscription was the Levites. You had to serve the nation to show loyalty, fealty, and that you were a man. And so... This is what God is saying, that America has not helped others except where it has served her purposes. And so she won't get any helping hands and no allies. Nobody is going to come. Nobody will respond. And here's the word, nobody will intervene. That word intervene means that people can see that help is needed, but they're not going to intervene. And that is because the Lord says that nobody is going to tango with Russia as she will be in the future. A coalition, of, a coalition of nations is coming. It's not just Russia and it's not just China. It's Taiwan and it's Ukraine. It is Japan. It is North Korea. It is South Korea. 
And the Lord did mention that nukes will fly here from South American countries and even Cuba will be involved. The Iranians will also have their say and people in the Middle East will definitely be watching with rapt attention. God says that they will be delirious with joy. I have been hearing that since 2015. That's one of the oldest prophecies where God says how happy the Arab nations will be when America comes into this time of final attack. And so this is the word of the Lord. September 4, 2023, and the total prophecy, it will just be called SOS. You can read Revelation 18 for yourself and you will be able to see all the things that have been discussed there. So now on September 3rd, I was in church and I was having such a strong experience of the Lord. The Holy Spirit was really moving and the Lord was, excuse me, please, speaking to me and he was talking to me as always in these high points of intimacy he was talking to me about America and he was telling me that I will see it with my own eyes when he judges America. He said that you will see it, you will observe it when I deal with America. And he told me, go forth and speak your words because I have chosen you to bring these things forth into the earth and you will bind America with your words and her judgments will fall on her. And so to bind America with words is simply to deliver these prophetic words. I've always said that prophetic words are very important to God. They're not conversation pieces. I know that in this country, we think that once somebody says something, we're supposed to say something, but surprise, surprise, prophecy doesn't work that way. If you spend time in the word of God, you will see that even when the prophet is speaking, he will sometimes shift. He will speak a thing as if he is God's voice, and then he will say, but you say this and that. And then you realize that God doesn't actually need human interaction and conversation to do his things. God is able to say his part in the play, and then God is able to give all our comments, all our commentary, everything that we could say, because God already knows our hearts. Actually, holy, why is that? Because the Bible says that you have fashioned the hearts of man. I think that's in Psalm 37. You fashioned the hearts. So he knows all the excuses. He knows all the, I'm not guilty. He knows all the, but why isn't there any mercy? He knows all these things. So you would notice that when the prophets, prophets are prophesying, they will prophesy God's part, and then they will perfectly give all the people's excuses and then go right back to answering for God. That is what prophecy is. It is a whole and complete dialogue of God from himself to himself sent to us for us to either receive or allow it to fall away because we can't receive it. And judgment prophecy is the heaviest of all. It is like a burning mountain on fire placed in your hands. It will fall and then he's expecting you to pick it up and hold it again. And that is how we build resilience People are terrified when they have the prophecies, but long before I came, you were in church and you had revelation in your Bible. You had Matthew 24, you had Luke 21, Mark 13 was in this book all the time. Second Thessalonians was right there. Two Thessalonians chapter two. All these things were there. The problem is that they were not brought to your attention. You were given instead a fallacy that they didn't need to be brought to your attention because they're for some other alternate evil church that will come to holiness after you left the building. And now we come to a problematic state where you will still be in the building when it is lit on fire. And it is by the burning of that fire that we will be purged, tested, the loyalty of every heart on this earth will be proved before the Lord. And we will find out whether we built with wood and hay and straw or gold, silver, and precious metals. We will be tried and tested. And that too is good according to the Lord. And so the judgments of God will fall. The prophecies will be proclaimed. And God says that they will be a binding on America. So they will be ties. They will be chained. The nation will be bound up and chained up by the messages that you are listening to. And that is why I always say, if you can go and watch the 
if you can go and read the messages, the bond that you have, not with me and not even with the messages, but with the Holy Spirit, with the Lord Jesus himself will be that much stronger because there's something about reading and hearing God expressing himself for himself in these written messages that I know it has had a lasting effect on so many people. I get your emails. I see your testimonies. I am aware that you are repenting and well, you should, if you have been walking in sin and you needed a YouTube video to grab you by the collar and wake you up to the time and the season, then well, you should repent and you should make it a daily pursuit. It is honorable to walk in holiness before the Lord. Imagine how holy God is. So holy that when the angels see him, they're used to him. They didn't meet him this weekend. They're used to him. He's been with them all along. Those of them who were wise and decided to stay in the home that he created for them and not come down here and be sleeping with Becky and, and Sue Ann. The angels that decided to keep their first habitation, to keep their first estate, the presence of God is still able to surprise them. Imagine immortals still able to gaze upon their father for no, who knows how many years, able to gaze upon him and be amazed that they will cry out, compelled to bring forth worship, holy such a different environment and ecosystem up there and here on earth. What are we finding? Some are cleansing their garments and others are trying to find out how much sin is okay. Do I have to get rid of everything? Do I have to give up the fornication and the smoking and the lying and the stealing and the dissembling and the envy and the gossip and the gay life? Do I have to stop being trans? What's the lowest bar that I can hit? and still attain heaven. They're giving everything up there. Others here are finding out how to give everything down here. And then there's some people trying to find out what's the cheapest bleacher seats that I can buy and still be able to watch the game. May God help you with that. And so, the next thing that the Lord said in that very high atmosphere is he was talking about revival and the nations he mentioned were Bahrain, Pakistan, and Kenya. Bahrain, Pakistan, and Kenya will have revival. And the Lord made it known that this is true revival. This is casting away your idols, whether it's political idols that you have in Kenya, whether it is, I think Bahrain only has one king. So it's not like they have a different kind of westernized political system. But true revival, God says, and it centers around repentance. People repenting of their sins, listening to and accepting the true gospel. So that when the true gospel comes, we cannot think that when the true gospel comes, people just say, Oh, this sounds great. This sounds better than what we're used to. When the true gospel comes, it is very confronting to a false gospel. There's always a clash of kingdoms. When people come and start talking to you about any of the basic Bible tenets that do not line up with what you were taught, there's an instinctive rise to defend what you know. And the reason for that is because if someone comes and attacks what you know, what you've always believed in, especially if you're a crime scene Christian, you're a Christian who's been studying Mystery Babylon, your hair has gone gray, you have a wall mapped chart about how it used to be Iraq and it will be Iraq again. And there's a whole coalition that believes that Mystery Babylon, the, the Antichrist and everything, it has to be in Europe. Imagine you've devoted years of yourself to confusion, unfortunately, and then the true gospel comes powerful cutting. It's offensive. There's a clash of kingdoms, dark and light, darkness. And now light is trying to enter. Is light trying to enter to just be offensive? Is light trying to enter to say, I'm better than you? No. When the true gospel comes, false Jesus, rapture date, YouTube channel, Jesus has to fall. He has to bow. When real Jesus comes in, 
and says that you will suffer many things for my sake. And they will put some, some of you in jail for 10 days. And woe to you with the babies because off to the mountains you go and just pray that it will not be in winter. When real Jesus comes in with that kind of conversation, all the people who follow false Jesus are triggered. They are highly upset. And this is why America doesn't have true revival because it is next to impossible for real Jesus to get a word in edgewise. But these three countries... Bless your souls. The Lord has said that servants will come to you and they will witness to you on his behalf and you will participate in the genuine revival of those days. Imagine, so there are days coming where countries are going to have the bright light. Let us go to the book of Isaiah. The bright light of the true gospel that is perhaps not wanted in some locations is going to be welcomed in other locations. People are going to cast their gods. They're going to cast their idols. They're going to cast their spell books. They're going to cast their sorcery and their generations of lies that they have inherited from their fathers. They're going to cast all those things away and they're going to willingly welcome in the truth of the gospel. Let's go to Isaiah chapter nine and verses two, just verse two. And it says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. There's no brighter light than the truth of the Bible. There's no brighter light than that. It makes you sharp and it actually wows you in its simplicity. What a pity that now in Christianity, people who don't know anything about the blood of Jesus, they don't know anything about how to pray for a family member to get free of an addiction are the same people that want to know, do you actually know what the, what the word Genesis means? And do you know the origin of the word amen? Just imagine we're in the end days. You have the Bible in front of you. You can study and you can become an expert with the bow and arrow. You can become an expert with the sword. You can be, become an expert with the sling. The truth is here in front of you, and yet you complicate it until you end up like the poor victims of Romans chapter one. Who are those victims? The victims of Romans chapter ones are the ones who the Bible says, thinking themselves wise, they became fools. It's right in front of you. If you read it, it will enter into your spirit, but you want to wonder about the most obscure points of it, and then you fall into a pit and so God will just pass right over that kind of thinking, that kind of theology, and go to the people that he knows. Behold, I stand at the door of Kenya. I stand at the door of Pakistan, a Muslim nation, and not just a Muslim nation, but a militant Muslim nation, a nation where they consign Christians to the poorest areas of the country and they mock them and they think that they're crazy for following a God who doesn't better their lot. If God is so powerful, why doesn't he make you richer? And why doesn't he put you in the government? Why are you just this tiny 2% group of people? God is going to open Muslim Pakistan, Muslim Bahrain, three countries labeled, three countries named two out of three following Allah and only one Christian, but corrupted in their Christianity, loving false prophets, false signs, false miracles. The Bible they have had, a contingent is praying and another contingent is going off the rails and atrocities are happening there in the church. False prophets are rising. People are running after fake signs and miracles, buying little trinkets and bringing demons and mermaids into their lives, into their homes, destroying the foundation of Christianity in a historically Christian nation. And God is saying, I'm going to intervene and I'm going to put a stop to the false worship. Two Muslim nations and one Christian nation. And if you will remember, I spoke of the revolving door prophecy a long time ago. And I said that the long saved people, those entrusted with the gospel since so long ago, are going to become offended when Jesus doesn't come back, offended when they realize that they might have to lose their life 
and that they cannot, if they want to stay true and go to heaven, that they cannot go and take mark of the beast and all that. Once they realize that they actually have to go through the fires of affliction, the fires of testing and purging in order for their mouth love to be proven to be a heart love of Jesus. Well, out the revolving door, they will go and in will come the Muslims. That's for sure. The Muslims and the Sikhs, the Hindus, those who follow Shinto religion, Islam will come in. Baha'i will come in. The atheists will come in. And the people suffering from church hurt. Praise God. Repentance. Repenting of sins. Actually sorry. No excuses. Able to say, Lord, I did it. And here is the reason that I did it. Able to accept the truth able to lay the sins down. He says, able to listen and able to receive, accept the true gospel. You know that in order to accept something, you're not going to try and debunk it. It is impossible to accept what you feel led to debunk. Cross purposes. You have a child, perhaps your child is in prison. Your child doesn't have any money. He wants to hear your voice. She wants to talk to you. They call home, hello, this is so-and-so county jail. X and X person is calling. Do you accept the charges? No, I debunk them. It's all lies and fear-mongering. How is your child going to talk to you in those circumstances? The debunker of today is the mocker and scoffer of his story historical fact mockers and scoffers that Jesus said in Matthew 24 will abound, which means that they will grow like mushrooms and you will turn around and they'll be everywhere, including in your own family. Such people cannot accept the true gospel. It puts them on edge. It's like fingernails on their soul. How dare you? And yet these three countries, God has found you good ground. God has found you good ground. He says that he will send people to you to witness to you on his behalf so that you can be a genuine, a place of genuine revival and be a part of the genuine revival of those days. Yes, the genuine revival days are coming and we thank God for it. The last thing the Lord said to me on that day was, Judgment will be unsealed in the United States. And at that time, the visible experiences of your prophecies will be seen. So the day will come when it won't just be Celestial made a video. The day will come, and I've always known it, and I've mentioned it a few times, the day will come where I will not show up to make any fulfillment video. I won't have the heart to, and there will be no need to. Some horrible major false flag takes place somewhere. We see Barack Obama grinning his deepest grin as he walks up to become supreme leader of the whole place against the protests of everyone who says it can't be him because the Antichrist comes from Europe and it can't be him because he has to be incredibly charismatic and most of us hate him. No understanding of what it means when spiritual wickedness wakes up like a misty perfume and begins to rise out of you don't know where and affects the mind. And as I said, what you hated what you despise, you sleep and wake up and look at the TV and see him and love him. And into the Obama conga line, you will go completely forgetting what you said in 2022, 2023. It could never be him. It will be him, him and all his stooges that he will eliminate one by one. You won't see the Clinton. You won't see the Bushes. You won't see Kamala. You won't see anybody Player one is going to show why he's a single player only. The day will come, judgment unsealed in the USA, 
visible experiences of the prophecies now seen. America, the rainbow nation, straight men telling people, I was confused about my sexuality. 65 years straight brought four kids into this world. You will see that man telling everyone he was confused. He's actually non-binary, mostly gay. The spirit of destruction raging in this country, madness, people completely off their heads. The Lord says that the psychiatric units will not be able to hold the applicants. People will lose their minds and become unhinged in America. When we start to see all that, is there any need for fulfillment videos? We will live the prophecies, the visible experiences. This is what God is saying. And so the title of this prophecy over two days, September 3, September 4th, 2023, the title of this prophecy is SOS, simply means distress signal, distress call, calling out for help, a nation under attack and not getting it. And yet in the end times with so much going on, God is prophesying new life, revival, revival, coming back to life in the midst of death, coming back to life, dry bones, nations, nations are made of people, you know, dry bones, receiving the water of the word of God and bringing forth fruits that will glorify God. Repentance is the key to that. Apologizing to God for personal sin. That's how revival actually comes to a country. Each one accepting my sin, my sin, my sin. And then that thing begins to catch a fire. The Holy Spirit begins to blow on it slowly like a campfire and it catches in one home and another home, spiritually moving from person to person, wherever it can find willingness. People are going to get right up out of their boyfriend's bed and say, it's either we marry, we separate until you're ready, or we separate for good. Why give God a low tier? I want to sin, but I also want to go to heaven. Heaven doesn't want you if you're sinning, and I don't care if you're offended by that. It's amazing how people want to have standards, but then want to also insist that God is so much love, he cannot have standards. That's preposterous. God invented standards. Heaven is a standard. Hell is its counterpart. Hell is where people go that don't want standards. Hell is the home of Satan, the anything goes guy. You want a life where anything goes, that's your home. That is your father. For you to carry on sinning after you have heard the word of truth, then you are, you're making your choice, the family that you want to be in. God has standards. No one can demand that the father not have standards, especially if we mere mortals have standards. Well, I won't eat that. I won't shop there. But then God should just take anything because why? It doesn't work like that. Wherever repentance can catch fire in a person, the Holy Spirit sees another dry wood and can move there, another dry wood and can move there. Study true repentance, not the false candy cane lies that we have here, where people just get excited for a moment and I'm driving over there, it's a great time. We sang and God was there and then I have to go to work. Revival is a fire set by God and it burns where the wood is dry. America is green. And when she is burning, all she gives off is that poisonous smoke that all the Davy Crockett guys know. You should not burn green wood. Even I know that. Green wood, undried wood, but where the wood is dry. It might be dry because you're suffering. You might have lost everything. You might have been in such a hard time. And maybe it's not your fault. And maybe you're in a hard time because your head is hard. So God wants to show you that his is adamant stone, flint, a diamond, much harder than yours. Maybe you're in that horrible situation because you have worked and clubbed and partied and weed gummied your way into it. And now he's got you pressed up against the wall so that you can call his name, so that you can humble yourself and repent. But where the wood is dry, 
because of whatever circumstances, the Holy Spirit comes in there and begins to move and kindle. God, I'm sorry. If you are sitting in your home and things are coming to your mind about what you have done, why will you not go to your knees and open your mouth and release those things so that you can be free of that burden? If it's been coming to your mind, how many emails do I get? It's been on my heart. Why do you need to talk to talk to me about it? Why don't you just humble yourself? Why don't you just kneel down and try to see if two Chronicles 7 and 14 can happen at your home? If my people, why do you want to be called by his name, but you don't want to humble yourself and turn from your wicked ways and confess your sin so that he can come to you and heal your land? You're made of earth, dirt animated for a season. You are the land. Psalm 32, a Psalm of David. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found, surely in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. So in the average life, where you have not received proper Bible training, you have not been discipled in the truth of God's word, most people will forget about everything I said from verse 1 all the way up to verse 6, and they will just jump to verse 7 and make a boast. God is my hiding place. God will preserve me and keep me from trouble. God will surround me with songs of deliverance. But there is a process to how this person ended up at verse 7, which is a promise from God that he will hide people from trouble. He will save them from a flood of great waters. The process is repentance. The Psalm starts out by saying, the man who God has forgiven his sin is a blessed man. So what does that make the man who's still holding on to his sin? What does that make the man who will hear about still twerking in the club at this time of human history where wars are being fought and beamed into our homes. And he's still out there and saying, well, what's good for the weekend? That man is not blessed. His sins are piling up. There's a time clock operating against his life and he doesn't know it. He's not like the one who has confessed the sin and it says the transgression is forgiven. The sin is covered. The blessing can now enter. Why is the blessing going to enter the home of an active sinner? In America, when we say active shooter, everybody wants to run away. But then active sinner, everyone is like, don't judge him. You don't know what he's struggling with. The struggle is not the shame. The shame is the refusal to come out of the struggle into victory. There is a misunderstanding in Christianity today. We glorify the struggle, but I'm struggling. Are you looking to the victory beyond? Does it matter to you enough? Do you actually want to attain the next step? Or are you in love with the attention and the comfort and the sympathy that you get in the victim period? We all go through the struggle and we need that comfort. But some people get addicted to the comfort. Some people love the victim role a little too much. They get used to the waterworks flowing and they get used to easily sinking into the base emotions of depression and fear. And But what can I do? There's plenty you can do. You can be bound up like this 
but nothing limits you lifting up your eyes and praying to God with your mouth. And in the time that is coming where we will not be allowed to offer public prayers, you have the endless vista of your heart, an unlimited meadow to walk up and down in your heart, talking to your God. Prayer cannot be taken from you until life is taken from you. May God protect us and not bring about any AI that can read our minds when we're praying because they're working on all that kind of stuff. Even when you are limited, God is listening. All these promises of being saved from the flood, the godly will be saved when they pray to you in the time that you can be found. In the time that you can be found, automatically tells us that there's a time he will not be found. Exactly like the DMV. As soon as it's time for those people to go home, they close the window. You could be standing right there. You could have the forms. You could say, they will pull that shade down in front of your face and go home because it's five o'clock. God has a time when he can be found and a time where he says, in the day of your calamity, I will mock at you. You laugh now at the prophecies. And then later, when the prophecies are being fulfilled, you cry out to him, and then you just hear that laughter coming back. What a perishing feeling. Repentance is a gift and a privilege. Who would hold on to sin? Here is the psalmist. David is saying, when I kept quiet, when I kept silent, when I refused to repent, when I thought, well, why is she talking to me like that? And why does she have this superior attitude? What superior attitude? The fact that nobody's ever preached the truth to you in 200 years, and now you simply hear plain speech, and it's offensive because it doesn't match up with what Joyce Meyer told you. You're a winner. You're a chicken dinner, whatever she's always saying over there, pumping you dry of cash and lying to your face and then getting facelifts with your money. And then what? What is the value of thinking I'm superior. When truth comes, there's a clash of kingdoms, dark and light. They can't occupy. Oil and water, they can't mix. You have to choose. Are you holding on to the oil of the anointing or are you just going to be flooded away with the waters of destruction because they're surely coming? You have to make the choice. The confusion is inside of you that is offended. The confusion is inside of, the two kingdoms are inside of you. Because I've already made my choices. When you keep silent, David says your bones will get old. You'll get sick. You'll be depressed. People will be asking you, Patrick, what's wrong? And you won't want to tell them about your porn library. Because it's not the kind of thing you discuss at dinner. You'll be on a date with that new girl and you already know in your heart, even if you like her, you're going to objectify her because you have a walking library of flexible women in your hair, in your head, and she's a good girl and she can't compare to them. So you already know it's not going to work out. You're suffering because you will not confess the darkness, the dirt, the cockroaches have taken over the kitchen. And you're still shielding them and protecting them because of embarrassment and shame. And yet you have a room, God bless you, wherever you are. You have the floor, you have knees, you have everything you need to come back into the sonship of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's close the door of the room, put your knees on the floor and start talking. Honest, spirit and in truth. That's how you open that shut connection. Celestial, I feel he's not listening. What are you talking about? You're trying to talk about deep spiritual things when you haven't confessed. Your sins have separated you from God. This is what Isaiah says, worthwhile advice. It is always worthwhile to open the old steamer trunk and see if the cockroaches are in there. And if you see even one, put 15 mothballs of prayers in there to kill it, just to be sure. Christianity is worth having, and anything worth having 
It's worth the effort. It's worth fighting for in Jesus' name. Thank you for being with me. This is the Master's Voice Prophecy Blog. I am Celestial. God bless you and keep you. May the word of God go into your spirits. May the word of God go into your hearts. May the word of God leverage everything that God wants you to have so that you can be ready and able and willing to walk in godly footsteps, to walk in truth, to walk in righteousness, to walk in sanctification, and to live your life to the fullest as God has intended for each one of his children. Until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.